Thank you very much, Administrator Bolden. Thank you for joining us here this morning, and thank you for your many, many years of honorable service to our nation. Uh, I'd like to start by, by asking a general question. Uh, in your judgment, what is the core mission of NASA? Mr. Chairman, I've uh, given that a lot of thought over the last few days, and so I went back and looked at the original Space Act of 1958, and, and I won't quote it, but, but essentially our core mission from the very beginning has been to investigate, explore space and the Earth environment and, uh, and to help, help us make this place a, a, a better place. So that, that's the, the, the nuts of it right there. So. And I have to admit, it, it, um, another core part of it, because we have multiple, if you want to say multiple cores, which is kind of hard, uh, aeronautics is an essential part of what NASA does. It is the big A in NASA. And um, if someone from another planet came down and looked at our budget, they probably would not believe that, because it, it is the least funded, uh, the skimpiest funded portion of the budget, but, but uh, we're working on it. Well, there's no doubt that there are multiple important priorities within NASA, but, but I would suggest that, that almost any American would agree that the core function of NASA is to explore space. That's what inspires little boys and little girls across this country. It's what sets NASA apart from any other agency is the mission that has landed man on the moon, that has the potential to explore new worlds beyond our imagination. And you and I have had this conversation yes, many sir. times. Uh, and, and you know that I am concerned that NASA, in the current environment, has l lost its full focus on that core mission. And I want to talk for a minute uh, about the current budget. And If you look at the current budget of NASA, and if you compare 2009 to 2016, we can see from 2009 to 2016 that Earth Sciences has had a 41 percent increase in the budget. In contrast, exploration and space operations, what I would consider the core function of NASA, has seen its budget drop 7.6 percent. And looking at the remainder of the, the elements, planetary sciences has a 3 percent increase, heliophysics a 10 percent increase, astrophysics a 10 percent increase. In my judgment, this does not represent a fair or appropriate allocation of resources that it is shifting resources away from the core functions of NASA to other functions. Uh, do you share that assessment? Mr. Chairman, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested in your chart. However, I will, I will say one thing. Um, it is interesting to note that there is a decrease in exploration or human spaceflight when, in fact, uh, that was somewhat intentional because we were trying to get the cost of, of, uh, of exploration down as we reach farther out into the solar system. It used to cost us $2 billion a year to maintain the space shuttle, whether we flew it or not. Today, uh, NASA pays, I want to say we now have two contracts that are in the neighborhood of about $6.6 .6 billion that will give us 16 flights on a combination of Boeing and SpaceX. Uh, missions carrying American astronauts to space. Uh, that will probably take place over about um, maybe three or four years. Um, so I, I think we have, rep we, that decrease is, is actually a little bit of what we were trying to do, get the cost of flying humans into space down. That's, that's what's driving the market, is reducing launch costs. So the fact that Earth science has increased, um, I, I, I'm proud to say, um, it has enabled us to understand our planet far better than we ever did before because it's, it's absolutely critical. If I go back to what used to be my home state and is your state, the state of Texas, uh, we have the Texas Soil Ob Observation Network, which is strongly supported by, by NASA. And I don't, Senator, I don't need to tell you 
Uh, when I lived in Houston, the elevation uh, sank uh, a matter of inches over the period of time that I lived there, and that was because we were pumping water out of the ground and we just didn't realize what was going on. But now because of some of NASA's efforts, uh, we have satellites that are able to look and actually measure the difference in, in uh, gravitational field of Earth, and we can tell that we're emptying out the aquifers. And that's well, just I, looking at our environment, trying to make sure that we have a, a better place for all of us in which to live, and I, I, I think I'm, that's critical. I am confident, though, that it's, it's not your testimony to the subcommittee that NASA has all the resources it needs oh, for no. space exploration. No, 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 no. And that it has suddenly gotten less expensive and more affordable. Indeed, as you know, the first hearing the subcommittee had, we heard from expert testimony as to the real challenges if we are going to go back to the moon or to Mars or beyond, that it's going to require a significant investment. And, and I would suggest that this chart does not suggest that the investment of budgetary resources is going where it should. And, and, and let me note one specific matter, which is this past December, Orion completed a nearly flawless maiden unmanned test flight on the Exploration Flight Test 1 mission. But despite the success of SLS and Orion, the President's budget request cuts funding by over $441 million. Does the administration lack confidence in SLS and Orion and their ability to get American astronauts to Mars in the 2021 time frame? Senator, quite the contrary. I think the administration has the utmost confidence in us, and that's the reason that they presented the bill for $18.5 billion that they did to the, con to the Congress. The President trusts me to take whatever amount of funds the Congress appropriates to us and, and, and appropriately balance that across our portfolio because we do have multiple things for which we are responsible. The fact that uh, we now have a set date where the launch complex at the Kennedy Space Center and SLS will be ready uh, for flight of November 2018, the fact that we are going to have a set date when Orion will be ready to be uh, integrated with SLS and we will have that this summer. The fact that we had a successful test on, uh, on the solid rocket booster out at Promontory Point, Utah, two days ago. Uh, the fact that um, we now have two contractors who are upgrading their facilities at the Kennedy Space Center and, and at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station so that we can launch American astronauts to space from American soil in 2017. The fact that we now have a robust, uh, we have robust competition for uh, American companies to get cargo to space where that used to be the job of the government, uh, I think that speaks highly to the confidence that the, the administration and hopefully this Congress has in our ability to do exactly what you want us to do. I don't think you've, I don't think we have, I, I would say, I, I, you asked me about your chart. There's a lot of chartsmanship. I'm not sure what you include in exploration, for example. So by my statements, I was not acknowledging that I agree with the numbers on the chart. So I, I don't want everyone to, to say I accept the numbers on the chart, because when you talk about exploration, a lot of times people don't count the launch complex. Uh, you can't go anywhere if you don't have a place from which to launch. A lot of times people don't count commercial crew and cargo. We can't go anywhere if we don't have a, a, a robust, sustainable low Earth orbit infrastructure. So there are a lot of things that people don't count. We can't go anywhere if the Kennedy Space Center goes underwater and we don't know it. And that's, that's understanding our environment. So as Senator Nelson said, it is absolutely critical that we understand Earth's environment because this is the only place that we have to live. Having had an opportunity to view it from a place where I look around, I'm not sure anybody else in here has had that opportunity, uh, we've got to take care of it. And the only way we can take care of it is that we know what's happening. And the only way we know what's happening is to use instruments that we develop in NASA. And, and we do it better than anybody else. I'm proud to say that. I, I always come and brag on my, on my workforce. We do it better than anybody else in the world. And that allows us to get data to you and members of the Congress and the administration who make decisions. Uh, you know, we don't make decisions. We don't give you opinions. We give you data. And so I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done. And I'll go back and, you know, take it for the record to, to see whether we agree with the numbers on the chart, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. We now recognize uh, Senator Nelson for his question.